there's got to be hope. There's got to be optimism. There's got to be the possibility of a future where they could save the day. What's up, guys? I'm Katie Wilson on the red carpet at the world premiere of Ant-Man and the Wasp. I'm looking forward to fans experiencing the new and different and weird ways we use the PIM particle technology. Shrinking and growing, and it occurred to us that let's not just use it on people, let's use it on vehicles and buildings and all these different things. So uh, hopefully they're going to see sequences in this movie that they've never seen in any movie. This is incredible. I've actually been to more of these than some of the actors, okay? With so many of my characters being uh, done on film. This one's especially exciting to me because the ghost the character I created Iron Man is in it. And like, I, I, I discovered Kevin Feige's secret superpower. Gender reassignment. Yeah. Yeah, so a touch of his finger, boom, you're a woman. What can we expect from the ghosts in this film? Um, a lot of badassery, <laughs> a lot of kicking butt. Um, yeah, no, definitely with, with Ghost, you're going to expect the unexpected. She's a very, very mysterious character. She's got a lot of depth. What are you most excited to see in the film tonight? Oh, the action, obviously. Like, that's what I'm here for. I want to see, I want to see the, the women do their thing, because I'm sure that's going to happen. That's part of the reason I think this movie's going to do so well. Women rock, women rule, and, and it's great to see some advanced movement in that direction, even with something like the superhero world, you know? Um, so it's great. I'm pretty excited to see her, see her kick some Evangeline Lilly, as an actor, is one of the most physical actors that I've ever worked with. She has a real strong sense of aesthetic and a really strong sense of how she would like the character to be physicalized and embodied. And so we spent a lot of time going over this in R&D, basically, in front of a mirror, mirroring each other and trying to work out how the Wasp should be physicalized. To work in the Marvel Universe and to be in a, you know, a superhero movie is one thing, but to actually be able to share that experience with people that you can actually say that you appreciate and that you can learn from, I think is, you know, that's that, that, that just adds to the experience. So you spent a lot of time with the cast members on this film. Who would claim that they're the funniest? <laughs> they all would. Yeah, of course they would. Who would claim yeah. to be the funniest? Oh boy, I don't know. Who would claim to be the funniest? You know, I'll claim it. Yeah. I claim to be the funniest. What do you got, Rudd? <laughs> what do you got, Pena? What do you got, T.I.? What do you guys got? I am, yeah. Shots fired. Uh-oh. Yes. Uh-oh. How are we going to be feeling after seeing this movie? Well, the tone of our movie, you know, always by design is very different. You know, it's, it's way more aggressively comedic than something like Infinity War. But, you know, our movie is sort of a smaller, more intimate thing. It has all the spectacle, but it's really about family. So our main thing going into it was we want to make a fun, uh, more densely comedic movie. So um, hopefully audiences will feel good when they leave. Here's the great thing about comic books and comic book movies. We keep buying a new comic book every month, right? And for people like me, maybe you buy 15 comic books every month. You keep showing up because you know that you're heroes. There's got to be hope. There's got to be optimism. There's got to be the possibility of a future where they could save the day. And what's going to happen as audiences get to see Ant-Man and the Wasp is they're going to start to connect dots, I believe, in ways that hopefully Scott and Hope could bring something to the table to help them in their battle to save the universe.